Hello everybody and thanks for checking out my review. Today I'm going to be going over the Casio Pro Trek. This is the PRT B50 1CR. Uh, module number on this is 5601. So if you wanted to look up instructions before you purchase, uh, just look up Casio module 5601 on a Google search and you'll see instructions come up uh, all different formats. Uh, so going around the box, you have a plain cardboard box. It's a pretty firm hard cardboard uh, with the Protrek logo on the top in a green stripe along with the Casio logo in the front and nothing on the sides. On the back, you have the barcode along with the model and the module number. Of course, the model, uh, the SKU number. And on the bottom, there's nothing there. The box does open up on the sides. So when you open it up, you're going to have your instruction manual. You have it in all different languages. It's in a book format. And the very first page that you have here is the ability to be able to scan that in to get the manual. So... Like I said, you have it in all different languages. You have a warranty card. You have the FCC statement because this is a Bluetooth watch. And then you have just some basic information on the watch. It's a little stand up too. So if you have a collection, you wanted to stand it up, you can do that. And getting into the box itself, you open it up and it sits on its side as well. So when you take the watch out, it's a nice wood box. And you just simply have Protrek Casio on the front, nothing on any other side. And you just open it right up and right inside here, usually comes in plastic, but uh, you have the watch. Comes in a nice little green insert here. Keep everything in place. Oop. And there's the watch. All right, so getting into the ProTrek PRT B50, I'm um, going to get into the size and the details of the watch. Uh, the size is 57.5 millimeters wide. It's got 50.8 millimeters lug to lug from top to bottom. And then it's got 15.8 millimeters thick and it's 64 grams as far as the weight. So when you put this on the wrist, it actually wears extremely well. Um, it does not seem as big of a watch as it actually is. And that's, uh, I like the design that Casio has been putting out. A lot of the watches are coming through like that lately. Um, this is a black resin version of the watch with mineral crystal. The straps are, they're resin, but they're, they're, they're fairly soft. There's a lot of flexibility to it. Obviously it's an analog digital with a digital display above the six o'clock mark. The numbers are white. The hands are the same color white with loom on the hands only. Uh, the second hand is white with an orange tip that does not have loom as well. You do have a subtle inner ring. Uh, it's like a green metallic accent ring that runs from the 8 o'clock to the 4 o'clock markers that you really just kind of see it with the light. It looks, uh, it, it looks really nice. And then it's got the ProTrek logo below the 12 o'clock mark. It's got six buttons around the uh, watch itself. Uh, you have the setting button at the top left here. You have the mode switch on the bottom left here. At the below the six o'clock mark uh, in a yellow color, you have the LED light. The LED light illuminates the the digital display and the hour and minute hands. Going back up to the top, on the top right, you have the compass button. In the middle, you have the Bluetooth activate button. And then on the bottom here, you have the altimeter button. And going around to the back, you have a lot of convenience on this. First of all, I believe that's a aluminum rear on here. It's got a resin ring that, I guess, keeps dirt and grime coming into the, uh, coming into the battery itself. The battery is uh, user replaceable, so if you notice on the four Phillips head screws, they're big enough where you don't need a jeweler's uh, type of a screwdriver to open it up. You could use pretty much a small type of a screwdriver to get in. The battery life lasts approximately two years. And one handy thing about this watch as well is the spring bars have like a handle on them, so it's really easy to be able to disengage it. So all you have to do is put your fingernail in there. Pull it open, and it's real easy to get that open, and then really easy to close it up. So this way you could switch the straps out or just remove them flat out if you uh, wanted to just attach them to your backpack when you're hiking. 
You also have a matte, nice matte finish. It's a stainless steel clasp here. The keeper is also resin. All right, so like I said, this watch does have a uh, lot of features to it, so I'm going to walk you through them all. And we're going to start off with the display. So when you're walking around in regular timekeeping mode, the primary one that I typically use is the month and the date. But you can also set what other, uh, what, other what else is going to be displayed within that LCDs area. So if you press just simply the setting button one time, uh, it'll keep the date on the right side, but it'll give you a barometric reading. So this way you can see if if it's rising or 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 falling, and you can kind of tell if it uh, if it's going to rain, if it's going to be nice outside. The next one up is the simple time with the seconds. Next one up is a step counter, so you can keep an eye on your steps throughout the day. Next one up is the sunrise and sunset, so you can keep that on there uh, at all times during the day. And then, again, the month and the date. So going through the settings itself, first one is you have the barometer, and it gives you the actual reading. You have the temperature. Now, just keep in mind that the temperature, if it's staying on your wrist, it's going to typically uh, enter the temperature that, uh, you know, your body temperature is going to rise that temperature. So it's got to be off of your body for probably close to 20 minutes to get an accurate reading of what the actual temperature is. You can change the uh, temperature readings from Fahrenheit to Celsius, too. And then you have the receiving. As far as when I'm doing hikes, uh, it gives me the date. And then it gives me my altimeter readings. So I have uh, plenty that I can go through. And then the next up, the sunrise and the sunset time. You don't have to have it just in the time display. If you just want to find it out during the day, you can just bring it over to that setting over here. Uh, you have your 24-hour stopwatch. And you simply start it, stop it, or you can reset it, start it, and then you have a split, stop it, and then reset. So it's a real easy uh, stopwatch to use. Then you have your 24-hour timer, so you could set that by using the setting. Then you can move the minutes, the hours, no seconds on this one. And then when you press it again, it's ready to go. So. Same thing as a stopwatch. You just press the bottom right, and it starts it, and the top right resets it. Then you have five alarms that you can work with. You have an hourly time signal, so every hour uh, you'll hear it beep two times. And you can turn them on and off. just using the setting button. And to set them, it's the same exact thing as time. Basically, you just go in, you could set it up to four o'clock, and it's good to go. Let me just turn that off. You have your world time. And this works really well with the application, so this way you could set it up to the world time that you want, and then you could swap them out really easy using the application. I'm going to walk you through that shortly. And then that's it. And you have your regular time setting. Now to set the watch, you're going to go in and keep the top left set. You're going to set your home time. So I'm in the New York area. So I would just bring it down to New York. Press the mode button. Now it takes me to daylight savings. I keep that as auto. Then you could set if the buttons are going to set a little tone or you can mute them. I like to keep them on. And then for the lighting, it can either go for one second or three seconds. I typically keep it for three seconds. You have 12 and 24 hour format when you're using the digital display. Uh, the receive on basically once a day it will connect with your smartphone and be able to receive the time so it's always accurate so it's you know just kind of similar as an atomic watch except it's just using your smartphone instead. 
Uh, you have your slope that'll basically tell you what your altimeter is doing across the day, keeping regular logs. Uh, you could change the units. And you could see them changing on the right side there from feet, kilometers. The barometric readings. Fahrenheit or Celsius. And then that's it. So the setting is really easy. And when you're done, just keep pressing it and it goes back to normal. And then again, if I want to just sift through the displays, that's easy to do. Uh, compass, I press the right button on the top and that sets my compass and it's going to give me the actual degree reading in the display. And then the second hand points to the actual direction that I'm walking. And I go into the bottom right and that gives me my altimeter reading. So it gives me my height. And again, if I want the barometer, the barometer used to be its own button. Now it's within the modes. All right, so now we're going to get into the location memory and location indicator. So while you're either in timekeeping mode or compass mode, you're going to hold down the top right button for at least five seconds until the indicator and then the memory starts to flash. And then you're going to release the button when the second hand points to the R twice. And what's going to happen is the app is going to set the location point for where I'm at at that spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk across the parking lot and it's going to set that location point from where I'm at. And then it's going to give me the distance from the starting point and the bearing location. So it's a really handy feature for hiking and navigating back to the starting point from where you begin. All right, so what I did was I walked across the parking lot that I was in, and I'm going to check the distance and the bearing to that first location that I was at. So it's going to show me that first memory point by holding the top right button, and this time I'm going to hold it for at least two seconds. And it's going to connect to the application, and you're going to see the word indicate flash on the screen, followed by... Okay, and what that's going to do is it's going to lock in my GPS location, it's going to figure out where I was before, and then it's going to show me on the display the distance to that first memory point. So this is great if, God forbid, you end up getting lost in the woods and you need to get back to your starting point. Uh, this is a great spot that's going to show you the bearing on how to get back to that spot that you were got lost. So as you can see, I'm 155 feet away from that first point that I was in, and the second hand is pointing towards the location I was in before that. So next up, I'm going to show you the route log, and this is a really fun feature that they have between the watch and the app. Uh, it's going to record your waypoints and their altitude along your hike. It's also going to keep your step counts and other information I'm going to show you shortly. Uh, but it also, while you're walking around, it's going to take, uh, when you're taking photos, it actually attaches the photos to those waypoints. Uh, so when you're going through it, you're going to see the photos actually connected within the mapping software that you'll see in the application. So it's pretty wild. So the way you activate is in timekeeping mode or compass mode, you're going to hold down the bottom right button for at least five seconds until you see the word log on the screen. And then uh, it's going to connect with the application and that's going to show as it's connecting the word measuring. So it shows that the log is active at that point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk around this apartment complex over here, going to take pictures along the way. So this way you can see um, exactly how it's going to work. And then I'm going to get back on at the end of that walk and I'm going to show you how to stop the log and then I'm going to take it inside and show you how the full app works. All right, so I took a walk around some buildings. While I was taking the walk, I took some photos. So the watch was tracking my hike. It was tracking the altimeter features. And now I want to turn it off. So what I want to do is press the bottom right button again. I'm going to see that it's recording, that it's going to log me off. It's going to connect back to the application, send the data back over to the application. And once it's m marked in the app, it's going to give me the access to the hike that I just took. So I'm going to click all activity and that's my route. So now I'm going to go take this back inside and I'm going to go over the features that it's going to show you after that hike was completed. All right. So just to get you back into those log setting that I was talking about earlier, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to press in for all activity and you're always going to get this little warning. I'm just going to put do not display the screen later. And this is what you're going to be receiving after you end up uh, doing your, uh, your route. So you're going to get a map display overhead. And when you tap into it, you can choose 
if you want just simply topographic or you can get an actual satellite image of your walk. Uh, but just for easy to display for you, I'm going to keep it at the topographic. And then you're going to see all these numbers uh, that are going around. What these numbers are representing is the photos that I took along that trip. So when I was walking along, you'll see here that I was taking pictures while I was walking along. And I could just press right and it'll take me to those spots that I took the pictures. And then you can open up the picture. So that's a uh, pretty nice feature in itself. I can actually widen the display so this way I could really uh, get in depth of exactly where I walked to and where I walked from. And then uh, it marks it down by the date. I could delete the photos if uh, there were a couple of them I didn't want. It gives me the activity time. It gives me the activity distance. It gives me the um, altitude difference on you know what, what my actual uh, walks were going. So if you're walking in the mountains, uh, it gives you the differentials on your highest point. It's a, it's a really, really neat aspect of this watch uh, that works really well with the smartphone. With, with the smartwatch, so uh, with the GPS settings. So this way you're not killing the watch's battery, but at the same time, um, you're getting a lot of information on different hikes that you're going through. So that's, uh, that's it for the location stuff. So there's a lot that you're able to do with this application. So I'm gonna walk you through the different features. So right off the bat, uh, as soon as you open up the application, it's going to have you at the uh, different the GPS settings. Um, I move it back to the guide, and the guide will give me an idea on how to get into the watch. So if I end up holding onto the Bluetooth button for two seconds, like it tells me to, it's going to connect. And I get the confirmation once it's connected. And then I'm able to go through different settings of the watch. Uh, so if I go into the little gear on the top right here, that's going to give me the ability to walk in. I can get a tutorial, um, activity map, display settings. So it'll tell me if I want to keep that map in there because it's uh, going to drain the battery on your watch. Um, and it also drains the battery on your smartphone. So uh, you have your phone finder settings. So there's a little volume here. And basically you can... Find your phone if you lose it. So you can change the different settings on the music and you can set it really loud. So if you lose your phone a lot, this watch will be really handy for you. Uh, you have your different profile settings. Uh, I walked you through the watch, but you can uh, do the same exact thing. You can actually set your own profile for your height, your weight, your date of birth, your sex, and the target steps that you have per day. So this way, if you're uh, looking for specific exercise activity, that gets you there. You got your unit settings, so that's where you could set up kilometers, miles, barometric pressure, temperature settings, and then height, weight, what you want to go with as far as the you know centimeters, feet and inches, kilograms, pounds. And then once you're done, you can send this setting to the watch. I'm just going to keep everything as it is. And then you have mode customization that I was talking about earlier. So if there are specific features that are more important than others, you could change the alarm, for instance, to be the first that goes in there. Send the setting to the watch. So when you go through the modes, the first thing that will pop up is the alarm. Uh, so if the barometer is more important to you, you can make the barometer, then the temperature, and then you can have the sunrise and the sunset. You can go by whatever is important to you. So this way, it's easier to get them, uh, easier to get to them when you're uh, when you go into the modes. And then you send the setting to the watch. Get the confirmation. You're good to go there, and then you can go into the display, and you can tell it uh, the formats. Um, the formats in the display when you're pressing that uh, settings button. And then same thing, you can actually, if you have things that are more important, you can rearrange how many times you have to press the buttons to get to the points that you want to get to. And you get the op button operation tone. You get the time that you... Uh, Wanted to disconnect after you're in the application, so you could set it up for three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. So if you're not doing anything with the application at all, that's how much time it'll take before it disconnects automatically. You get your light settings. Light settings are either a minute, uh, I'm sorry, one, one and a half seconds or three seconds, and you could set the auto light on or off, send the settings to the watch, get the confirmation, and then go to the next setting. 
lot of different configurations that you can play around with in this application. Altimeter correction, so you can actually have it where it's going to take the information from the smartwatch, or you can automatically uh, look look up your altimeter readings online, and you can correct them in the app uh, through the application to the watch. You can set your heading sec uh, sections, same exact thing. That's with your compass. Method of calculating cal uh, calories. So the more accurate calorie calculation can be made by using an air pressure sensor while walking. So again, it does take up a little bit more battery life, but it makes it a lot more uh, accurate as well. Adjusting the home positions. So when you go in here, if you want it to change, if you feel that the hand is off a little bit, you can auto correct where they sit in the watch, which is also very handy. Send it over, good to go there. And then your summertime setting. So you can set it to auto on or off when daylight saving time comes. So that's the main features there. And then you have a little guide section here too that'll walk you through the different features. I walked you through the route log. You got your step tracker. So it'll start it up at mid uh, 1201 at night and finish up at 1159 at night. So this way, it, and then you can go into the calendar and it'll actually give you the counts that you have from day to day. And if you uh, want more details, It'll give you more details as well. So it'll tell you how many steps, how many calories you've consumed. You have the world time. And I love the settings that they have on these watches. So if I wanted to change it up, I could look it up. So if I wanted to change it over to Chicago. It's set it up. And it's going to show in the digital display. And you'll see the map actually goes over to Chicago, sets it up, and then you're good to go. And then you could swap them out by pressing that little left arrow, right but, uh, arrow. So I could swap it over to Chicago, and then it automatically takes place on the watch. Send it over. Get the confirmation. You'll see the hands move automatically. And there you go. You want to switch them back over. See the little animation. Send it over to the watch. Get the confirmation. And it changes it up again for you. And then you get your utility. So you can set your alarms. So if I wanted to set it up for on. Works with 24 hour format. So this way it's no AM PM. So if I wanted to get up. Uh, one o'clock in, in the afternoon, 1300 hours. I could keep it on or off, send the setting over to the watch, get the confirmation, and you're good to go there. Hourly time signal, so this way it goes every hour, I'll hear two beeps, and then I could set the timer on here as well. So if I wanted to just set it up for no hours, two minutes, send it over to the watch. Setting complete. And that's it. So that's the application and using the watch with the application. All right, and just to give you a wrist shot, just to show you the size of the watch and how it fits, I have a seven and a half inch wrist. The nice thing that I like about the sizing on this is there's a lot of different notches here. So there's a lot of uh, settings. So if you like it a little bit loose or a little tight, but you don't have to have it super tight, And that's how the watch fits on a seven and a half inch wrist. It's not too large. Like I said, for the for the size that this watch is, it wears it wears pretty easy.
All right, just to give you some size comparisons so you kind of have an idea on how these measure up with other watches, um, one watch I got a number of years ago was the uh, PRW2600. So I'm going to measure that up next to each other first. And as you can see, they're right around the same size. I think that the 2600 is a little bit thicker. You also had this guard on the bottom here that was making it a little thicker. But the width is slightly wider, but they're kind of the same size watches. None of them are uh, overbearing. Watch I did a review on not too long ago. This is the new edifice. And I give you the 5600. Quite a bit bigger. But just about as thick. Actually, the 5600 might be slightly thicker because of that steel bottom. And then we have the 9052. Width is just about the same size. The G-Shock's a little thicker. Then I give you the Frogman. Measures up pretty well with that. Of course, the Frogman's also thicker. Wears a little heavier as well. And then the uh, new Range Man. Comparable features. So the Range Man is obviously much, much larger. Much, much thicker. Got a lot more functions too, of course, and it is a G-Shock versus the Pro Trek. So those are the comparisons. And just to give you an idea on the LED lighting, so you'll see that the display lights up nice and bright and the hands light up as well. Doesn't show up very well here, but I'll try to get some photos of that as well. So that's the ProTrek PRT850. Uh, like I said, it is the 1CR model. Uh, there are different uh, color versions of this watch as well. I encourage you to go to Casio.com. Uh, put the direct link to get to this watch below. Um, I want to thank you very much for your support. I want to thank Casio very much for sending this watch out for review. It's been an absolute pleasure uh, getting to know this watch. As far as the review goes, I mean, it's a, it's 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 awesome. I mean, it's a little intimidating at first, but if you familiarize yourself with the settings, especially on the manual settings, um, it takes a little bit of a learning curve. But once you know them, you, you know this watch. It's fairly easy to learn. I always say, though, the easiest way to work with these watches is definitely if you have a smartphone, download the application and work with the application, especially just those GPS features themselves make it worth it alone uh, but the setting is just so you know, I, I i think casio should take a lot of pride in what they've done with this application if you're not a big fan of the smart watches that have come out there they've been putting out a lot of different watches that are uh, that are good in betweens Again, Casio, I want to thank you for sending this out to me. I want to thank all of you for your support. Please subscribe and click the bell to get notified when new reviews come out. Um, I am also on Twitter, so see me at Twitter at Doug FNJ. I also announced my new reviews there as well. Uh, there's a great website with a lot of awesome information. It's watchyouseek.com. Uh, that website has a lot of really good information on all types of watches it's got a great sales forum uh, and a lot of great discussion so a lot of good people over there so again thank you very much for watching my review i hope you found it helpful um, the walkthroughs are a pleasure to do for you and have a great day